Hey guys, I'm Samson Dabina. Today I was reading one of my favorite books with winning in mind, and I thought I would just take a few minutes and read part of one chapter to you, and maybe we can discuss it. So this is chapter 13. It says, the self-image is the sum of your habits and attitudes. Your attitudes determine whether you feel positively or negatively about an item or a concept. Your habits determine how you act, and you will do certain things because it is consistent with your self-image. Are these familiar? These are some things that you might think or you might say. I perform great in practice, but when I get into a match, my score drops. If I do well at the beginning, I lose at the end. I am so busy, I just don't seem to get much done. I can never remember names. I can't sell anything. I'm not that kind of person. I could never speak before a large crowd of people. I'm technically sound in my sport, but I choke under pressure. So these are things that you might think or you might say. And what are these? These are all temporary self-image attitudes, and they can change. In fact, the same people who held these attitudes initially soon began to talk like this. So this is the attitude change that we'd like to see. I perform better in matches than in practice. If I start well, I finish well. I am an efficient person and I get things done. I'm good at remembering names. I enjoy speaking before groups. I'm the kind of person who people order from. I can count on a good performance, especially under pressure. What accounted for the change? They all experienced a change in, what do you think it is? A change in self-image. When you shift the self-image, the change is often permanent, and we tend to perform within a certain comfort zone. Bob bowls between 120 and 160, and is like him to bowl an occasional strike, but he has never bowled four strikes in a row. He gets nervous when he bowls three strikes in a row, and it's not like him to hit four strikes in a row, so his self-image executes a correction to keep him in his comfort zone, and here comes an open frame, and he's comfortable between bowling 120 and 160. That's like Bob. Your self-image makes you act like you, and it keeps you within your comfort zone. If you are below your zone, your self-image makes you uncomfortable and turns up the power until you're within the zone. Likewise, if you are above your zone, your self-image will cut your power, dropping you back within your zone. As long as you act like you, the self-image is content and does not interfere. So I hear this a lot in table tennis. It's people like, well, I beat the people I was supposed to beat and I lost the people I was supposed to lose to. So overall, it's a good tournament. So they get stuck in this rut because they feel comfortable in that zone and then they feel uncomfortable when they're losing to a lower player, so they really gear up. And they also feel uncomfortable when they're beating a higher player. <gasps> I know I'm going to choke, and then their level goes down, okay? So part of improving in table tennis, just like Lanny Basham, the Olympic gold medalist shooter says, part of making progress is changing your self-image. When you change your self-image, you can actually improve. Your self-image makes you act like you. It keeps you within your comfort zone. If you are lower than your zone, your self-image makes you uncomfortable and turns up the power until you're within the zone. Likewise, if you are above the zone, the self-image will cut your power, dropping you back to your zone. As long as you act like you, your self-image is content and does not interfere. To change your performance, you must change your self-image and elevate your comfort zone. You need to change your self-image. Controlling the change in your self-image may be the most important skill you'll ever learn. And that's not just for shooting, that's not just for life, that's for table tennis as well. You can change your attitude you do not like. When your self-image changes, performance change. Beginners tend to have comfort zones that are quite wide with the upper and lower levels not well defined. As one improves in the skill and these limits become more predictable, the upper and lower limits should become closer to one another. Elite players strive for consistency in tournaments, scoring with very small comfort zone variations. When your score is well below where you expect it to be in the competition, one place to look for answers is the self-image. There is good news and bad news ahead. The bad news is that your performance and your self-image are almost always equal. If you do not like your score, 
there is a good chance that you need to change your self-image. There is more bad news. The self-image resists change. The self-image resists change. This is actually a good thing. If you change too easily, you would love your spouse one day and not like him or her the next. The good news is that self-image can change, but I admit it's not easy. The problem for most, most of us is that we know something has to change for our score to improve. We just do not want it to be us. We prefer that our problem be solved by buying new new piece of equipment. We would prefer that if we read another book or take another last lesson that we would change. We would prefer that someone else be the problem instead of me, anything but me. But no one can change your self-image for you. You have to do it yourself. And the first step is to admit that you have a problem. So once you have decided to change, how do you do it? You can try the most common method used by frustrated players, and that is certain to make you even more frustrated. Just train more. I bet you've heard that one before. The good, uh, that is a good way to change our subconscious mind, but it will do little to change self-image. Playing more doesn't always improve self-image, but imprinting a good performance always does. Let me read that again. Playing more doesn't always improve self-image, but imprinting a good performance always does. I'm going to read that one more time. Playing more doesn't improve the self-image, but imprinting a good performance always does. The self-image you have now got that way somehow. Doesn't it make sense that you would have to change it the same way? How does self-image change? You change it through imprinting. Every time we hit a target, we imprint a hit. This is called an actual or environmental imprint. Your environment gives you an indelible imprint every time you perform. Let's take golf for an example. When you hit a bad shot, you have just improved the chances of hitting another one in the future because your self-image has imprinted that it is like you to miss shots. Every time you practice or play, you risk getting a bad shot or a bad imprint. However, you can imagine However, you can imagine a great shot with 100% accuracy. An imagined imprint is still an indelible imprint. Now, I will admit that scoring an eagle in a big competition tends to have a stronger imprint, um, but which is easier for you to do? We can imprint thousands of imagined perfect shots with 100% accuracy. All it takes is a little knowledge of how to do it correctly and some effort. My experience has been that the method of imprinting that is used affects the amount of self-image and change. Visualization is not as effective in changing self-image as rehearsal. Do you know the difference between visualization and rehearsal? Okay, what is the difference? Most people understand visualization to mean seeing as clearly as you can what you are actually seeing when you perform an action. I have even used the term in my work. Many players are concerned that they cannot seem to get a sharp picture and do not really see clearly when they try to visualize. I don't think that the clar uh, clarity matters. In fact, it is not what you see that is important, but what you feel. It's not important what you see, it's important that what, what you feel. Rehearsal, the feeling of hitting a good shot. Don't try to see it, try to feel it. What does the move feel like when you properly do it? When you imprint in this way, you avoid having to clearly visualize and you reinforce the non-visual aspects of the shot as well. Many good players talk about being a feel player. When, do you, uh, when you do that, you're rehearsing, not visualizing. Another factor is when you rehearse. The best time to imprint is just before or just after the action of hitting the ball. So you just hit a good shot. You just made a good serve return. You just had a good sequence. If you do a rehearsal in your mind, this gives you the biggest imprint. Rehearsing hitting a good shot both before and after the swing or putt. This causes three imprints on each shot and two of them are guaranteed to be good. Not only does this greatly improve the chance of a better score, but it causes the self-image to grow at the same time. There is a huge cumulative effect to doing this. Can you imagine if you did this on every shot, 
for an entire season? What an advantage. So why do a few, do so few players do it? I believe it is because it takes an extra effort and most are just not willing to work hard to win. Effort, that's what it takes. So you wanna have good rehearsal. You wanna have the right thing. You wanna be able to do the right thing. So what is it recommending? It's recommending that before the point starts, you be able to rehearse the right thing. Obviously when the point is there, that you be able to do it. And then again, after the point, to be able to rehearse it in your mind. This gives you three imprints. And like I said, at least two of them are good imprints. Hopefully the third one is as well. So how do you improve? Obviously it takes practice. Obviously it takes practice doing the right thing, but it takes having a high self image, having a high confidence that you can do it. How do you improve your confidence? By rehearsal, by picturing yourself doing the right thing. It's fine to watch videos of Fenjin Dong or Jun Mizutani or Timo Bull doing the right thing, but when you do the right thing, do you reinforce it? Do you reinforce it in your mind? Do you say, that's like me? The more you talk about, write about, and think about something happening, the more you improve the probability of it happening. How are you gonna do that? You need to be able to picture yourself doing the right thing. As soon as you make a great shot, do you step back and do you picture yourself doing it? As soon as you do the wrong thing, do you step back, do you find a good solution and do you picture yourself doing the right thing? See, it's more than just getting on the table and playing more and more and more and more. It's being able to practice the right things, being able to picture yourself doing the right things and being able to actually apply these things in matches. I'm Samson Davina. Thanks for listening to me today. If you want more free articles and videos, make sure you check out my website, samsondavina.com.